also I had a schlep all the way in from uh, from Hell's Kitchen, or whatever they call it these days. Yeah, I'm up. Uh, I'm up there, kind of in uh, what would you call that? It's like in between a fashion and Times Square area. Uh, yeah, that's Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> oh, it is degenerate central, dude. Degenerate central. Every street you walk on, it, I thought this was bad here, 7th and, and 35th and stuff. And it is. But uh, holy shit, that is real bad. Crackheads just walk... I was walking to one of the restaurants and a crackhead woman is smoking crack, just walking around all freaked out and look like turning around and looking at me like I'm following her. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> Wanted some crack. <laughs> Wanted dad ass. Yeah. So uh, it's and, and uh, drug addicts all over the place, shady degenerates. And uh, that's what's going on uh, over there. So I'm in the lap of luxury uh, over there. Not to mention the room itself. Uh, I've been there a week, I guess. A week, not even. Not even a week. And uh, the room is already just a biohazard, I, I believe. Uh, the, the You ever get a room so messy that you just don't even want the maid to come? You're embarrassed to have the maid come in? It's pretty much where I'm at. Towels are everywhere. There's beer bottles and food things because there's no. I, I could go to the restaurants, which I do, which is nice. It's nice not having a, the same fucking uh, Uber Eats shit uh, that I was getting in Mineola every night. Oh, uh, what is it? Chicken and rice from the fucking uh, Greek place or this or. Uh, yeah, there's some nice restaurants near there. Yeah, you can kind of take a little walk. I think, isn't the restaurant district near the theater district? It's a little on the west side of it. So I, I go down a little bit, and uh, yeah, there's some really good restaurants. But um, at 2.30 in the morning, they're all closed. But downstairs in the lobby, there's one of those uh, things you put your key in, and you can just get things. And the, by things, I mean like ramen noodles. And uh, a Jimmy Dean sausage egg muffin. <laughs> Again, not to brag, but I must reiterate, I have accumulated a great amount of wealth over my, my years doing radio, and I am very grateful for that. Uh, but the way I've been living the past few months, if not a year, uh, is abominable. Like, I, it's almost like I've taken a vow of poverty uh, and uh, just decided to not spend any money. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at here. I went and got some uh, ramen noodles. You know, they're always good. And uh, I'm, I'm cooking them up in the microwave, you know. <laughs> and I don't even know. Like, I remember ramen noodles being that, like, everything, like, cup of noodles, right? Or something like that. You just kind of put the water in and, and put it in the... Well, the packets are in there now. <laughs> was, it, was it in a cup or was it the brick of ramen? No, it was a cup. Oh. So I assume you just put the hot water in. That's what I did. Yeah. The seasoning was still in there. <laughs> I open it up after a while, and of course the noodles are still like fucking paste. They're like al dente, <laughs> and the I see something. I'm like, what? And it's the thing. It's the fucking seasoning. <laughs> it's like a tea bag now. I'm steeping my my noodles at two thirty in the morning in a shithole in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> so I, I open it up, and it's a nut. Like it clumps out, kind of, and that's good. And I'm stirring it up, and I see another thing in there. I'm like, what the fuck? And it's plastic. It's like clear plastic. I pull it out, and it's oil. It's some kind of little oil thing that you put on to give it that Asian. Like, jeez, what the fuck else is going Lug nuts. There were lug nuts in it. 
what else is going to be in this fucking shit? So pulled out a full size wok. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Just in case you want to stir fry it, there's an Asian person in there to cook it for you. Fit perfectly into the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just fits. Uh, yeah. So uh, I was just like, uh, you know, going what 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 is going on here? And then there I am um, trying to hook up the the TV. Um, I'm eating my ramen noodles, and the TV is a satellite, so it's always fucked up. It's like satellite hotel TV from the 90s or 80s. It's constantly going out, loss of signal. There's this uh, pixelated fucking shit going on on the side. Uh, and there's only, uh, every show was either a bunch of rednecks trying to find gold somewhere show, or... Uh, like those uh, reality shows where a bunch of black people are yelling at each other, which I could just watch out the window. I didn't even need a TV. So I, I hook up my laptop. I get, an, I get a $40 three-foot HDMI cable. I shit you not either. $40 in New York City in one of those rip-off electronic stores. You know when you walk in there, just Crank your pants down. Lube? No. Make sure dry your ass. Dry it. Put sand on your ass. And, and, and let them fuck you right up the ass. $40 for a three-foot HDMI to HDMI cable. Not even a good shielded one either. It's like a regular fucking shitty. Look like an iPhone charger cable. So I plug that in and... Uh, why would that work? <laughs> I see I see my desktop on the TV. And I'm like, oh, cool. I go to Amazon and I pick a show, pick some Twilight Zone episodes, and I hit play and it starts playing. I see I see the subtitles are coming up and and it's all black in between my desktop, but no picture. I'm like, what is what is this? It's Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. That's what happens here. If we try to play a Prime video on my computer, it won't show up on through Drew's thing. Well, we have it like... Well, let me tell you. I, I texted my good friend, Mr. Chris Baldassano, <laughs> expert in all things computers, and he figured it out. He's like, oh, you probably got to mirror your, your laptop screen instead of like making it a extended, duplicate yeah. or something yeah. or it's like extend right it was mirror but you got to extend it which means you're literally making your laptop screen and the tv screen one big screen he goes and then minimize the amazon thing drag it over to the big tv uh make it big again and you'll have it and i'm like Great idea. this motherfucker <laughs> uh. he might look like a useless piece of shit but <laughs> he is the epitome of what you need if you are uh, trying to figure shit out with computers. Thank you, Chris. It did work uh, well. So I, I just put Twilight Zone episodes on. Every fourth episode or so, it stops and goes back to the uh, Twilight Zone episode menu. And I guess that's, you know, I can't complain about that. Uh, so that wasn't bad. But I'm, I'm watching, and I couldn't get my desktop to go away, so it's still the desktop thing. And then... <laughs> So I'm just looking at that, eating my, my fucking ramen noodles uh, at 2.30 in the morning in a, a, a place that looked like a bomb hit it. Just uh, uh, terrible. Towels. I spilt a beer while I was playing uh, Call of Duty last night, which is the one good thing. They do have high-speed internet. So I was able to plug an Ethernet in and a $75 Ethernet cable. No, <laughs> I brought that one. Uh, and, and I'm playing Call of Duty. That was awesome. So I, I reached to get my can of Budweiser. And, of course, I hit it. It falls off the desk and just foam and beer everywhere. But I'm playing a game. There's no pausing in multiplayer. So I grab another couple of towels and just throw them on the floor, step on them a couple of times. And they sit there to this day. <laughs> Those towels and beer are still there on the floor. <laughs> it is awesome. 
I am living the life. You're going to keep like the do not disturb on for like a couple oh, yeah. of days and then just go down to the uh, front desk and be like, I think I need a new room. <laughs> yeah. Can I just get a new room here? It's so funny when they at the desk and they go, uh, so you're staying with us for a month? <laughs> like, yep. It's a nice room as far as, you know, rooms go. It's a little sweet. You get a stove oven, you know, stove top thing, and then a microwave, sink, dishwasher, dishes, a bunch of dishes in there and shit. Uh, yeah, so it's not like a bad, shitty where the, the neon light is flashing no vacancy outside or anything. Uh, but, you know, it is fun. It's like a little adventure. I kind of like this. The good thing is, see, here's the difference between me and someone else that is in that situation. I know I have a million-dollar house down in South Carolina. <laughs> I know I have a really decent retirement plan and, and money in the bank and all, like all the safety nets. I'm doing like a trick, a circus trick with so many safety nets. And it's like, oh, this, this trapeze thing is fun. And then the person that actually does it every night, they pull the nets away and it's just your job. And if you fuck up, you're dead. Yeah. But, you know. To the layman, the trapeze is fun with all the nets and everything. So it is kind of a, a fun little adventure uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm doing here while uh, we build the studio down there. There he is. Let's talk to Mr. Baldassano. Chris, what's up, man? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> well, well, first of all, what fucking poobah... Freaking ramen noodles thing that you get the cup of noodles that had the the packet in it. I've never opened the cup of noodles without the packet already in the cup. Yeah, that it's kind of defeats the purpose. It's a cup, and it's 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 a cup with noodles in it. it it's got like uh, everyone knows what those are. There's no reason to have it in a packet. You they know you're just going to dump water in it. It's not like oh, it's got to be in a packet. No, you just dump it in there. Everything gets I mean, are, are you together. just reliving the part of the book that when you when you went through? Like, you know what? I, I actually am online right now trying to buy you Hydrox cookies, but I can't <laughs> find it in less than a six pack. Really, give me that feel of renting a room in a green lawn, Long Island, back when I was a <laughs> youngster. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it's 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 fun though, and and, and the fun. whole the whole thing of coming here to do the show. Isn't as bad because it's a, a short walk. This is like the uh, that movie Life Stinks from Mel Brooks. Did you make a bet with Jeffrey Tambor that you were a millionaire and now you've got to live like a pauper for the next six months to try to uh, yes. win something? I, you know what? I don't mind. I'm this simple of a person. I really don't mind. I don't want to have to live like this. There's the big difference. I, I don't mind this at all. I'm a, I'm a very simple guy. I have simple needs, uh, but I, you know, but I, I want to I, know that I can just stop doing this <laughs> and and live in the more in the lap of luxury. Uh, it's it's fun when you don't have to live like this to live like this. Well, that's what we love about you. You're a simpleton piece of shit. I am a simple simple man. <laughs> I was staying at a hotel. Uh, on 39th between 7th or 8th and 9th Street, right in Hell's Kitchen. A shitty area, a uh, lot, lot of bums, a lot of uh, thugs and whatnot, but you know, kind of interesting. Great restaurant down the road. I, I went there pretty much every night. Got a Guinness and a nice uh, chicken thing. Just awesome. And because uh, it's also, it's not just thug, hate, shit area. It's kind of the restaurant district for uh, Broadway. Like when people go to see Broadway shows, 42nd Street and Broadway and stuff, the, you could go around the perimeter and uh, there's amazing restaurants uh, around there. So I had to go to this place and just grab uh, Guinness and some, uh, some eats. Uh, so I, I had to stay there a month. I I went in and made a reservation for a month, the entire month of uh, uh, no uh, 
August. Yes, August. So September rolls around, and I know I'm going to be away uh, for the uh, uh, Labor Day weekend and whatnot. I'm going to be in South Carolina. But I wanted to re-up and get another month at, at this uh, hotel. And I, I go to the desk and ask the guy, can I get an, um, another month? And they go, well, uh, you've been here a month. Yeah. I want another month. You can't do that. Why? <laughs> Why can't I do that? You're not allowed. Get this. You're not allowed to stay in a hotel in New York City for more than 30 days. I know. It sounds crazy. Sounds crazy. I'm like, well, people, if it's a, a hotel apartment or a hotel condo or a living arrangement, or if you're a migrant, you stay there as long as you want. But regular Joe, Anthony, wants to stay for two months at a hotel. I can't. So, so the second he said that, I, I, again, because of everything going on, I go, huh, what could the financial gain of New York City be that I can't book two months in a row? Well. Here's what it turns out. And the guy didn't tell me this. I just went, like, I'm not going to argue with some foreigner at the front desk about not being able to have uh, uh, two months at a hotel. So I go, all right. I get right on my phone and pop in my problem and fucking look. Here's the dilly, yo. If you stay 30 days in a hotel, you don't have to pay the daily room tax to the city, which is 14.5%. You pay a hundred bucks for a room, that's 1450. You pay 200, that's $29. You've spent three months, don't I math is so hard for me. I had two. You get it, don't you? So what the the city demands is that the hotel not allow you to stay there. They have to kick. He goes, after three days of you checking out, you can come back and get another 30 days. <laughs> and I knew, I knew it was a screw you move from the city. They had to somehow Get into your fucking pocket and, and get their money. And as I say with all shit like this, who voted for that? How is the politician that came up with that and, and put it into legislation representing the people? Did the people come to that politician and say, I want to pay tax. I want to pay that room tax every day I'm here, even if it's over 30 days. I need to pay that room tax. Or did the hotel consortium give a fuckload of money to the city and say, uh, yeah, we'll adhere to your rules. Oh, and by the way, I don't doubt this either. Uh, the hotels get a kickback. Not a, a mob guy gets an envelope, but they get some tax uh, deduction on their business. Because now they won't allow people to stay there 30 days. So I'm like, is this... Is this what the, the people want? Is this representative of the people? Of course not. Of course not. But does that matter anymore? Let me tell you what I'm done with. Remember when I said I was, um, when I'm out of the business of, I am out of the business of the Renaissance Hotel. One of my faves.
Renaissance has been one of my favorite hotels, not only because it's within staggering distance to Sullivan's or this very studio. I get back from South Kakalaki. I land at LaGuardia Airport. I'm exhausted. I've been up. I didn't go to sleep. I, I'm just fucking exhausted. And again, that's not anyone else's problem. I get that. I take an Uber. Quick ride, by the way. Like half hour from uh, LaGuardia to uh, the Renaissance. I had already booked a uh, room for a couple of nights over there. I get there. It is uh, two-ish, two-ish. And I understand check-ins at three. But a lot of times they have a room for you, especially if you're a member, a, a, a Hilton's uh, a member of what I am, whatever it is. And I get to the uh, desk and I, I say if there's a room and they're like, oh, no, sorry, we'll text you when there is. And I'm bummed because I am fucking exhausted. I'm bummed, but I, I understand. Look, I'm there before checkout, uh, check-in. Check-in's at three. And they're two something. I get it. She goes, we'll text you when your room is ready. All right. I sit in the lobby area. All of a sudden, and I assume that other people that are there early are sitting in that area. And they're probably tired and want to go to their rooms. They start blasting music from this is the lobby from the check-in desk and they're yapping, singing and dancing. And even then I'm like, all right, I'm not, I could sleep through anything, but I'm looking at other people going, I can't imagine they're happy with this. I wasn't, but I'm impervious to noise. I can sleep through anything. I'm good. I just wanted to sit on one of the couches and wait until my text I actually had my phone in my hand so I could feel it vibrate and wake me up uh, when my room was ready. Well, the time's ticking by. I'm not getting that. 3.30. Now, this is a half hour after my room is supposed to be ready. It's check-in time is 3. I walk up to the desk and I go, look, anything? Is my room ready? They have no idea what I'm talking about. I'd already been through the check-in procedure. ID, credit card, signed in, everything. I'm checked in. And this guy behind the computer at the desk is literally doing this. The music's playing. He's dancing. He's dancing while I need a hotel room. He's dancing again, asking me again for my ID. I'm checked in. <sighs> Ooh, was I fucking livid. So the, the thing that hotel, I don't even know. I think it's a game. There's no reason for, I'm checking. I'm checking. I've never seen anyone click at a keyboard like a fucking hotel check-in person. It's 2023. First of all, how about this? How about this? They're, and then they hit, they hit one button like five times. I want to fucking kill him. And he's still, he's grooving. He's dancing. Then he asked me for, when he asked me for the ID, I go, I'm checked in. He's like, we need an ID. I give him the ID. He gives it back. And then he goes, yeah, we got a room for you. I go, yeah, yeah, because... He gives me the ID back and goes, you know, you get up in your room, you lay down, you relax. Like he's telling me to relax. Like I'm the fucking problem. I didn't have the energy to fight with him. Like to really turn around and, and fucking. All I wanted to do is go to sleep. 
So I, I got the key. I, I went up and uh, went to sleep. The next day, my sleep has been insane lately. I'm up. I, I don't know what day it is sometimes. I see the, the my, my dark blackout blinds are shut in the hotel room, and I'll see a little line of light, and I go, sunrise, sunset? No idea. No clue. Don't know what time it is. I grab my phone and then I'll see the time and go, yeah, but what day is it? I swear to you, I don't know what the fuck time or day this was this past weekend. It's been nuts. So it was, oddly enough, and I was awake up as a pup, 8.30 a.m. I'm like, you know what? I'm awake. I had slept a fuckload the day before. So I was awake and I go, you know what? Breakfast. I'm going to get some room service breakfast. This is going to be awesome. And I, I'm thinking like of uh, when Tony Soprano was at the plaza and he ordered room service and he's got all the shit in front of him and he's just <laughs> like he breathes when he's. <laughs> He's watching the TV. He's seeing the Asian whores that he's going to order and shit. I'm like, okay, this is what I want. This is a four-star hotel, mind you. The, the Renaissance Midtown is not cheap. You're talking $300 a night. $300 a night. Four-star rating. So I go to room service. I go, uh, hi, could I get two poached eggs, some toast? I want some uh, potatoes. I'd like a fruit plate, uh, bacon, side of bacon, and um, a couple of uh, sausage and orange juice. All right, Mr. Kumia. We'll have that for you in a moment. Now I'm like, I'm 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 fantasizing about this. I get my robe on. I get my robe on. Cause I'm expecting the the guy, you know, the guy in the little uh tuxedo kind of thing that I tip him five. He's gonna come up with the cart and he's gonna pull all the thing, cling, here's your bacon. Cling, here's your uh, the little domes over everything. Your oranges, he opens it up. Uh, the carafe, he put we got some ice water here and some hot water and tea bags. It's, I'm like, ah, I'm fantasizing. Ah, ah! Here it is. When was the last time I was up at 8.30 in a hotel in time for breakfast room service? I opened the door to a Mexican, arm extended, with a paper bag in his fucking hand. I shit you not! I shit you not. Like it's Uber Eats or DoorDash. There it is. This is my room service at a four-star, $300 a night hotel in New York. Shit, fuck city. Look at it. The paper bag, the Boxes, plastic forks in plastic wrap at the computer desk. No plates, no silverware, no salt and pepper, no linen napkins, nothing. I literally ate poached eggs out of a box. Gee. Do you understand? Yeah. When I uh, signed in or logged, <sighs> went to the Ritz in Berlin, I was met with a glass of champagne just for 
being there. And then the, uh, the uh, free breakfast that every room got, there was literally 14 different cold cuts, prosciutto sliced up, a chef cooking, waffles, pancakes, eggs. <laughs> there was there was a live honeycomb in a frame that you could scoop out, <laughs> like honey, like honey from bees, honey. <laughs> yogurts, any type of uh, topping you wanted to sprinkle on top, any kind of fruit drink, apple, orange, the blueberry juice. It was a multivitamin drink, free Bloody Marys. <laughs> I can't! <laughs> I'm eating poached eggs out of a box! Out of a box. And then I'd have to open another box and get my toast. And another box for bacon. And there's greasy boxes in front of me. How the fuck is that service? Look at this. A bag that I threw my snot rags in later. You fucks. Plastic fucking uh, uh, forks and, and spoons. No salt and pepper for breakfast. Your eggs, I mean, salt and pepper. There was nothing, not even the dumb little packets of salt and pepper. It was the worst fucking room service I'd ever gotten i'd rather not have rooms up. i could have gone downstairs and grabbed this at any shithole place on 35th street and brought it up to my room for 10 times less than that cost me for room service at the fuck renaissance fuck you renaissance on 35th street in midtown fuck you never again Will I get, and I've been there so many times. I've stayed there day. I paid thousands and thousands of dollars to this shithole to fucking stay there. Their customer service is garbage now. Garbage. Fuck you. I, I swear to you, I am going to somehow communicate my displeasure to them. I know I just did. Uh, maybe I'll just send this recording. I'm going to send this video. Clip this. I am sending this to the Renaissance so they know what the fuck happened when I was a, a, a fucking valued customer. Hilton Rewards were something. Marriott. Marriott Club. Rib. I'm something. <laughs> oh. Can you even? It, it, it's so infuriating. And I'm a chill guy. <laughs> I proved it over the past uh, 45 minutes <laughs> or so. Was this like at least the restaurant in the hotel? It was. Dude, I understand what you're saying. If I had ordered out from some place on 35th and they deliver to the hotel, no, this was, I called room service. This is the restaurant in the hotel. They just don't do the cart anymore. The cart with the heater thing and the, they bring it out and they show you your, that's what you're supposed to get with fucking room service in a four star Manhattan $300 a night room hotel. They, they, they present it. You have plates to eat off of. Fucking plates! I didn't even have a paper plate. They literally had me eating out of the box. Out of the box. Oh, look at this. Oh, what's this, Vienna? Where is this? Somewhere. Anywhere that would have a real five-star experience. <laughs> this is what I'm used to. I, look, if I'm in a shit hotel, I understand. I don't expect this.
but I worked at a shit hotel and did room service, and it would look like this. And we yeah. did the fucking tops and everything, and the nice jars and Dude, like the fresh orange juice. That fucking shithole across the street could go burn fuck down, burn down. I've never been to Vegas on a vacation or just like, oh, I want to go to Vegas or friends are going to Vegas. It's always been, I, I had a gig or something. There's something going on. Uh, I'm not a fan of Las Vegas. Believe it or not, not a big fan. I'd rather go local to like the Borgata in Atlantic City or something if I just want to gamble or something or hang out with friends. But uh, Vegas is just, I, I ugh, can't stand it. it. It's just a a decaying uh, old school like you feel you should be there. You feel, oh yeah, I, I, got, I got to go to Vegas for some reason. But there's really no reason to go. It's not entertaining. It's not fun. There are other places to gamble. And as far as that, um, that nice, you know, hey, it's Vegas. So it's going to be uh, top of the line shit. That went out years ago. Well, listen to uh, De Niro. As Ace Ross, Ross, Rothstein talking about it uh, in Casino. That's exactly what it is. They don't know your name. They don't know what you drink. They, they're handing you, you know, they'll hand you a tax form instead of your money. They, all that shit. And, and he was saying it back when that movie came out. Was that the 90s at some point? Somewhere in the 90s Casino came out, I think. I don't know. Now, you know, we're, we're 30 years later than that, and it's just gotten worse. Just gotten worse. Uh, I stayed at the uh, MGM Grand. Oh, the MGM Grand, huh? Ooh, must be nice. Yeah, I'd been there before. It was kind of nice. So I decided to stay there. Well, I got room service. <laughs> Yep. Like you had to, right? Just I to see. To. <laughs> and, and, and here's how naive I am, Drew. It wasn't to see. It was to experience what I should have experienced at the Renaissance. The tray. The, it's not a tray. It's the cart. The room service cart with the, the leaves that pull up and they, the fucking tablecloth. And, oh, Mr. Kumi, you having a good time? Is it about clingity, clingity? Clink, clink, and the tops come off. The Room service. Ooh. Ooh. Excited little naive dick face Anthony runs to the door in his little bathrobe. Oh, the excitement and glamour of Vegas. And there he was. The Mexican, <laughs> arm extended with bags of food. I shit you not. I shit you not. If you'd uh, seen the last show we've done or the last show I did last week, I think it was a Tuesday or what have you. And uh, I was talking about the Renaissance Hotel, four-star hotel here in New York City. I was staying there and uh, that's what they brought me. Bags full of food for room service. No cart, no silver domes over every plate that makes that cling and the steam comes up. You're like, whoa, prime rib or something. No. And I thought the MGM Grand in Vegas, where I had stayed plenty of times before, and I had gotten that cart Thought maybe I'd be able to at least get a, a feel of it again after the debacle at uh, the Renaissance. Mexican bag of food. Here you go. He actually comes into the room and goes, where would you like me to put it? I swear to you. Like, no, that's, you don't get to say that. When they bring the card in, it's like, where would you like? To, oh, right in front of the bed here. Or you could set it up on the little table right there. If... So, yeah, that's, that's the service now you get in. And, and look, the Vegas isn't, uh, oh, the Vegas, the MGM isn't, uh, uh, 
you know, the clarion. <laughs> it's not circus circus or the trop or something. This is, by the way, they own every property in, in Vegas. You think the MGM Grand is just the MGM Grand? MGM Entertainment owns every fucking thing. The Bellagio. They own every fucking casino hotel in Vegas, except Wynn, I guess. I wonder if Wynn has it. If I ever have to go to Vegas again, and every time I come back from Vegas, Vegas I go, I'm never going back there again. Never going back again. And then somehow they pull me back in. I have to go for some fuck reason. This time it was for the comedy show. We were ending racism with our end racism tour. So uh, I sacrifice. I go to Vegas, even though I don't want to, to try to end racism. And uh, every time I'm just like, ah, fuck, back in this goddamn fuck place again. And it's only gotten worse like that. No service, no nothing. And then they, uh, oh, the 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 uh, check in. I check in on my phone because it's 2023. Quiche me. I could do it all right there. There's a huge line of people waiting to check in, and I'm just like checking on my phone. Fine, I did that. Had to wait a half hour over the check in time. You know, three o'clock. I had to wait till three thirty, and they send you a text, and then you activate your your Bluetooth. And you just use your phone as the uh, door key. That worked once. <laughs> that worked one time. And the worst part is you need it on the elevator too. You got to wipe your key there to get your room. There's nothing worse than getting in the elevator. And then you swipe and the red light is coming up. And, and, you t and then the elevator starts moving. And you're like, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where the round and round she goes. It's a gamble. Just in the elevator. I don't know what number is going to come up. Oh, yeah, you just passed my floor. This is fantastic. So I go to the desk and I'm like, yeah, this doesn't work. And I'm disgusted. You know, I'm not innocent here going, pardon me. Excuse me. Hi. That I'm like, this doesn't work. And uh, this woman standing next to the guy that is taking care of me gives me a look like, I go, I go, don't even give me a look. It's your shit that doesn't work. I'd had it at that point. Had it already. This was day one. Oh. So now you just use the key the rest of the time, which, you know, whatever. Uh, the room itself. Now, you know your pal, Anthony. I'm used to going to the Borgata in Atlantic City. I get treated like a king. I get a suite. The butlers come up with the goddamn carts. Not only with the carts, they take the big table in the dining room of the suite. And they put a tablecloth and they take everything off the cart and set a goddamn real giant fucking Knights of the Round Table table. And me and Mikey Cuffs and Dennis and my brother. And we're all fucking having a great time. Fred from Brooklyn. That's a good experience. By the way, haven't been there in a year. Can only imagine. Oh, room service. Here it comes. The fucking extended brown arm <laughs> with a bag of your shitty food in it. And it was shitty. The food's not even good. It's like fast food in a bag in a casino hotel. Oh, was I not having any of it, any of it. So uh, I played some blackjack and uh, not too bad. I won a little bit. And then I, I decided, fuck it. I'm not sitting here to gain points to get a suite. So I'm just going to play poker. Like Borgata, I have to play blackjack. If I'm going to continue to get suites there, they want you playing blackjack, not poker. Poker, they sit there and they take the rake and it's really nothing compared to the amount of money you can uh, lose playing blackjack. Uh, but you could also win a lot of money, really, uh, uh, in one night, really, uh, playing blackjack. So I played a little of that, but I was playing mostly poker, and it was fun. Yeah, there you go. That was uh, poker. I started with, like, maybe 200 bucks, something like that. I don't even remember.
But that was good. I had a couple of nice hits. It was fun. Everyone's talking and having a good time. Risky pulling your phone out at the table. Is it they different don't care at poker? Anymore. They don't care. Oh, yeah? They don't give a fuck anymore. Like the blackjack tables, they, they care uh, for some reason. The poker tables, you're constantly on your phone. Every time. And then the cars come around and you go, oh, okay. Everyone's on their phone. They don't give a shit. You take pictures. You fucking juggle with them. Doesn't matter. I don't know what that's all about, but whatever. I was fine with that. But those are just $25 chips and $5 chips. So it's not like crazy money, but I don't care. I wasn't going there to, you know, pay the rent or anything. It's just, uh, I was trying to have some fun. And I'm up till all hours. My sleep cycle goes completely. I'll go to bed at 9 a.m. and wake up at 6 p.m. to start my day. Uh, my brother came out, so we had a, a great steak dinner at a steak place uh, at MGM, which was good. <laughs> that was good. Uh, one of the few good experiences. But and it used to be in Vegas, like the steak dinner was, you get two lobster tails and a steak dinner for five ninety nine, and it was two, good. Two. But now it's like $80 steaks. It's not any sort two, of deal. You're right. My brother brought it up. We're looking at the menu. He goes, a hundred dollars for a lobster? Like, <laughs> how do you justify a hundred dollars for an ocean bug? <laughs> that was—that's what was cool about Vegas. It's like everything else was cheaper. Yeah, they knew you were going to be gambling, uh -huh. and you know you're probably going to be losing. So they just want to keep you coming back. There's nothing to come back for. Nothing. There's nothing where you feel like, oh, I'm getting even like the free drinks at the table. It's like, oh, as long as you're sitting and gambling, the waitress comes around and you get your free drinks. And in the day, they were, you know, you took care of them. They remembered they'd yeah. come around. They'd do that. Now, if you could find one of these bitches every hour and a half, you're lucky. Lucky and you just to get a thimble in. of Jack and Coke. Or yeah, yeah. Is. You'll yeah. get shitty fucking drinks. Within the hour that you fucking ask them for it, too. Yeah. You're like, I spend all my money at the table, which isn't not a lot. And then, right. like, I haven't got a drink yet. And I'm fucking looking around. Like, I have to wait there yeah. without money. I can't tip her anymore because I lost it all. Dude, that's the worst part is when you got to milk your bets because you put a drink order in and you're just waiting for her to come back. It's like, oh, table minimum, please. Oh, I hope I win this one so I could get my goddamn free drink that I just spent, you know, a grand for. Uh, then, mm. then, uh, this was just the greatest. Uh, the MGM, this is in the news, by the way. The MGM had a denial of service cyber attack happen over the weekend. Everything went down. Dude, slot machines are going bing, bing, boo. And it was a, it's on purpose. It's a ransomware thing that uh, attacked uh, MGM. There they are. Cyber attack shuts down MGM resorts in Las Vegas and other cities. Again, uh, the Borgata is owned by MGM in, in Atlantic City. So that's what leads me to believe it's going to be shit if I go there. I mean, they're probably, it's across the board, the same shit. Get rid of the cart. Get a Mexican with a bag. So all their properties, which are, like I said, pretty much every property in Las Vegas, wasn't able, and get, get this, this to me, I've heard of ransomware attacks and denial of service cyber attacks on businesses. This could possibly be the worst one ever to happen. They made it where you could not get money from the cage from your credit cards. That's everyone. You couldn't get money. If you had uh, a debit card and went to an ATM that wasn't part of the MGM's ATM machines, you could get out whatever your daily limit is. And most people, it's 500 maybe. Uh, they were being denied billions of dollars in all their properties because they just couldn't. I went up at one point and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'd like to, uh, do, to go, yeah, we don't, our computers aren't working. And I didn't know it was a big attack at the time. And I'm just like, are you, are you kidding me? I go, why else am I here? I go, gaming is the only reason you're going to a casino and you're telling me I can't do that. I'm sorry. sir. And then she gives me a fucking, a coupon for the buffet. 
80 bucks instead of 100. Which, <laughs> Something stupid yeah. like that. Which, by the way, because of my hours, it was closed. It wasn't even open. So I just, thanks. Whoosh. You just right in the shitter with that one. So, yeah, the MGM Grand and all their properties couldn't do credit transactions. They could not do credit transactions. No one comes into the casino unless you're a high, high roller with a suitcase full of money. You go to the cage, got your credit card. You go to the machine, you get the ticket. Then you go to the cage and they deal out whatever you took out of your card. Show them the ID, the credit, all that shit. And now I'm at the MGM Grand. Shit fuck service. Shitty room service. Shitty room. Oh, I was I was trying to get to that uh, earlier when I was talking about the Borgata. Uh, Ocean Club, Borgata, top floors, just looking out at the water and in the distance, you see the boardwalk and all those hotels and just great. I get into this room and, you know, the shades are all pulled down. It's 100 degrees. The air conditioner is on. I guess they don't want the sunlight shining through. Maybe that's not the total reason because then when I open up the blinds, I swear to you, I thought I was back at uh, Apollo Air Conditioning. All I saw were the AC units on the rooftop and a big wall. Like this is my, this is my fucking room. Was it? Uh, I'm curious because of all the things uh, like the service with the with the room service and stuff. Did you have a specifically like sweetie or sweet or was it just like a normal run of the mill? Dude, I had a room with a king bed and a TV. This was not a suite. And by the way, I was rated. I was rated, not rated. I was rated at MGM. I had a noir card. I had a credit line. I had all that shit. And I don't know. I guess if you're not there uh, for a year, which this was a, a year sounds like a long time. And oh, of course you got, no, it didn't used to be like that. A year later, you could call your host and they'll be like, cause they know when you do come back, you're going to spend money cause they treat you well. That is gone. There is no inkling of the old Vegas. It's all shit service, no customer service. Uh, uh, just resentful douchebags working there. And uh, it sucks. It fucking really sucks. Charlie, what's up, Charlie? I used to stay at Imperial Palace just because it was right in the fucking center, you yeah. know? But you were right next Before to the cheap to one. The fucking, I can't remember. It's right across the street from the Mirage. Oh. And uh, they, they always had the cheapest shit there. So I'd always stay at Imperial Palace that way you could walk around. Well, now it's called the Lynx. Uh-huh. And it's this big gluttonous pile of shit. It like, <laughs> yeah. it like leaks over into the hotel next to it. I want to say it was the Flamingo. Oh, God. Old and school. There's this, yeah, there's like this little walkway in the center where you could walk through and they have one of those like launching things where they tie you to a fucking rope and throw you like 40 <laughs> miles or yeah, something. Yeah, the slingshot thing. and Yeah. But the whole hotel was full of fucking douches. Like you said, oh, my God, yep. getting a drink. I finally figured out. The, the way you got them, you have to spend twenty dollars right off the bat, like you do on planes. Yeah, when she comes by, you give her twenty dollars and go. Just keep an eye out for me. I don't and know, dude. Come, I don't think they give a working. fuck, or they'll, you know, they'll take it and walk off, and then some other bitch comes on five minutes later, yeah. and your twenty walks out the fucking door. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking true. Yeah, it was real hard. I mean, last time I went there, I think it was twenty nineteen. But I was like, never again. I hope you enjoyed Vegas because I'm never going back there for myself. Well, Fuck. I think really fucked up everything to the point yes, where, but but they realize, oh, people will still come here if we give them shit service. You aren't getting yeah. room service or anything. Sorry, we had to suspend this. How many times do you get? Uh, now, personally, I don't give a fuck about housekeeping. I, I'd right. rather they not knock on my god fuck door at 9 a.m. Uh, yeah. But if you're somebody that wants your room cleaned every day, you're not yeah. getting that anymore. They go, well, um, you could request it. And then you're like, well, why? COVID? And then COVID's yeah. over. And then they just figured, wow, we could save a lot of money doing this. So they just yeah. don't do it was a way for all these businesses to give you shit fuck service and you'll keep coming back like a sap oh this guy i think i know what he's talking about matt what's up matt uh i was just in i was just at the mgm two three weeks ago yeah the 
the uh, the hallway from the main uh, elevator right by the yes. check-in all the way a mile down to my yes. room. It's fucking bullshit. Dude, pop up a picture of the MGM Grand Hotel, Las Vegas, Nevada, and me and Matt will commiserate because I know exactly what Matt is talking about. You get in the lobby, you get your mm. room, and the elevator is... No, no, I mean the outside. Sorry. <laughs> you get your room, and they say the elevators are right there. Now, the elevators are at the core of the building, I guess you could say. Uh, pop up that picture. Here they go. Well, they, I think they got it, right? So you got the... Uh, no! The general lobby. <laughs> outside! From outside! From the... From space! From there you go. Thank you. That's it. The the elevators are in the middle of the T. Like right at the top part of the, the, the T there. So you go up. Now your room, for some reason, is always to one side or the other or the other. There are no elevators to the extreme right or left of this picture no, why or the there? extreme Maybe forward part of this picture. They're all in the middle. So when you go up, you're walking a mile uh, through that long hallway to get to your shit room. And Although then it, like, I think changes the color halfway through to make you think it's not as long. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think the suites are on the ends, though. Uh, the top floor on the ends, you get a nice wraparound view. Uh, so that's kind of worth the walk. But if you're going to just a yeah. shit king fucking room, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got you Which walking a mile. Oh, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean, my friend.